Hello everyone. It's a bit of an unusual time for my conversations episode today, but uh, there is a reason for it, of course. Uh, so we'll just wait for a few seconds um, uh, till our esteemed guest will join us. Here he is. He's uh, uh, going to join us in a second. I'm going to and let's see. Just give me a second. Hello. Hi, dear. Hi, Sam. So you're, you're in the darkness. Is there any way we can make a bit of a more light for you? Yeah, let's see. I just, I was just, um, what do we yeah, think? Should I get out of my car and go back into the San Vicente bungalows where there will be noise? Uh, maybe we can try that because honestly, I want to see your gorgeous okay. self and I You're don't. The best. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back into the club. I was intending to do this video from the movie theater. Okay, here. that would have been cool. But then my friend rented it out i'm gonna come back for my car in a moment okay well i, I can you. see you better even now definitely so yes i, I can see i he, can hear the noise but it's important that we are uh, oh see somebody is actually telling me turn on the light in your car can you do that it's very noisy sir. so how bad, bad is the music is it too much music uh it is kind of a uh, pretty pretty ooh. too much music it's a background yes and now i don't see okay. you at all so all right. uh maybe i'm sorry i ran into the amazing david Sachs, who That's as you know yeah your amazing son mark eisterless <laughs> uh and i produced the film yes Dolly land with him. I'm trying to find a spot. Unless you to go back to yeah, your car I'm and uh, 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 um, would it be possible uh, to turn the music off outside? Smoking garden for that. I, I, if you don't mind, I'm so sorry. I don't want to get no one in trouble. I can't. I, I have to do this Instagram thing. I'll be here. Quietly. Yeah, Gradle is her marbles and you'll be suspicious. Okay. You're going to have to go to <laughs> But the smoking area is so loud. We should have saved you. So great to I'm see sorry, you. Girl, while you is fine, while you're looking for a spot, let me maybe say a few words about conversations with Olga. I will also do a very, very quick introduction about you by that time i think you will be able to find the spot and settle down a little bit how about that so let me welcome everybody first okay okay i'm gonna mute uh, no no you you don't have to but it's fine so um basically uh just thank you everybody to join conversations with olga is an ig live and youtube series that i started during the circuit breaker three years ago is the goal of introducing the friends whom I've met through my career and through my life journey and having an hour-long in-depth conversation with them about their personal journeys and how, how they're fulfilling their dreams, industries, insights, and more. My main mission and hope for this series is to inspire and cultivate a more diverse and inclusive community that can learn from one another all over the world. Well, believe it or not, today, uh, is my episode number 50. It's amazing and I'm just so proud and honored to have today's guest, uh, Sam Pressman, director, producer, and CEO of Pressman Films. As you know, one of the biggest producers of cult films in Hollywood. And uh, my very dear, I, I, I should say probably adopted son because he's a very close friend of my son. And I love you, Sam. It is time where, you know, it's a night time with Sam, I know, so that's why you're kind of trying to 
find the lighter spot and I won't I know how hectic it's been all this for, for the past several weeks for you and you just arrived yesterday from Toronto Film Festival so I'm so I'm very very grateful uh, for you to be able to join and especially at this very very important time uh, when you just launched an incredible project that we'll talk about later um, and our main topic of course will be about film producing crowd, uh, investing in film and the project especially that you just launched this Republic so welcome Sam and if you are ready, I will uh, start a little bit of uh, questioning okay. for you. Or I should say Thank more kind you. of a, a conversation together. Thank you, you for okay? having me. Can we do that? Yes, absolutely. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, um, I can hear you and we can see you now better. So thank you so much. We, we are fine. You. We are good to go. Thank you for So now for you are... Me. It's, it's, it's an honor and it's a pleasure and I'm so happy to see you. I, you know, I keep on inviting you to come and stay uh, with us. So at least uh, I can see your face now here as well and then hopefully you'll come soon. So you are now behind the film, uh, behind uh, Pressman Films, which is an incredible force in the cinema industry. So growing up as a father, as influential as Edward Pressman, uh, what was your childhood look like? What was it all about growing up with a uh, at Pressman? I was, it was such a beautiful childhood. Um, my father was a a truly kind and loving and passionate producer. He made films for all the reasons that I believe one should make movies. Um, you know, I got to travel the world. I, I was on, on set in Australia uh, on the film Island of Dr. Moreau. Yeah. I'm sorry, sorry to everyone who's arriving and missed uh, the beginning. I ran into David Sachs and Daniel Brunt who produced Dollyland with Olga's incredible son Mark and myself and my father and I intended to do this recording from the movie theater at the bungalows but instead would it be possible to turn the music off for a moment I was over at the bungalows where I'm a member and we don't have control of we don't have control of the music here it's okay, Sam. No we can hear you clearly, so don't don't worry about it. Mm. It's all good. It's all good. But thank yeah, you but for all trying. I want I want you and your community and for this video to live in posterity in such a way that I promise you, you will. Okay, I promise you, it, it definitely it, it, you deserve it, and it will make sure that it goes viral, for sure. <laughs> but <'cause laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's important, and it's important for all of us and for you, for sure, and you deserve it. Can mm. you tell us a little bit about your earlier lessons about film, storytelling and producing from that you've learned from your father? Well, my fa father spent 60 years of his life making movies. His first film was a music video for the Beatles in the mid-1960s for the song Girl. Uh, he he pioneered independent film and launched the careers of such filmmakers as Terrence Malick, uh, Brian De Palma, Catherine Bigelow, Oliver Stone. My parents met on a movie, uh, The Hand, which was Oliver Stone's first film. Uh, my mother played Michael Caine's student. And through all of this, the world is influenced and impacted. Culture is global and film has been the apparatus or the technology that has connected us all, right? There, there, there's no doubt that the printing press and reading literature from around the world made us all connected. But when you think about movies as this transportive dream machine, Movies have taken us all around the world. I've never gotten to be in Singapore, 
But when I saw Crazy Rich Asians and Mark tells me about the parties you throw, I feel like I know where they are. And, and that's well, the beauty sure. of film. And well, yeah. I think my father always believed in that. My father always believed that movies mattered. Um, and I hold that in my heart. Oh, it's so, so well said. It's incredible, really. And did you always see yourself following in his footsteps? I know, you know, sometimes it's tricky to navigate family expectations. And when it comes to our careers, I faced that, you know, I was expected to be, I think, the medical doctor following my mother's steps, but, you know, I haven't become one. So I want to, I would love to hear what was your own journey uh, being into the film industry? Well, I wanted to be a professional athlete. Yeah. Okay. But I am five foot seven and don't have the reflexes <laughs> of a, a super predator lion or cat. Um, and uh, uh, then I wanted to be a manager for a professional sports team. And I uh, met with some amazing you know, owners and team presidents and learned about what it would take. And um, I met Sandy Alderson, who was uh, the president of the New York Mets at the time, my favorite baseball team. Uh, and he told me basically, look, go to the best school you can go to, study mathematics, learn about you know, management and, and the finances of sports and come back to me in five years because I promise you, if there's anything else you can do, you should go do that because sports is not a fun career. Um, so I, I went to Stanford. Uh, I took um, an analytic um, calculus as well as a statistics class. Oh my God. And I also took an intro to film class and okay. in the intro to film class, I saw the work of a Russian filmmaker, Ziga Vertov, and halfway through this silent film class, I said, movies are the only thing I ever wanted to do. I, 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 I started uh, working in the film society and the film workshop and making films in my own time. Um, I realized later how much I'd learned through osmosis from my father yeah. and all of the scripts that I read growing up and all of the ways that just being surrounded by the world of film um, through my mother and father just filled me with this love that I'm so yeah. grateful to have. Well, so that's true. So you basically had a, an opportunity to be totally hands-on right from the beginning while learning statistics that hopefully perhaps are useful now as well, especially in some of your projects. Uh, this is amazing. So I, I believe that watching the silent movie was uh, one of the defining, mo <clears throat> defining moments that you remember that have shaped perhaps your approach to film and the whole industry. Or uh, I just want to understand a little bit more about this so we can talk about it later in the relations to your latest project. Yeah, the film by Ziga Vertov was called The Man with a Movie Camera. Uh, and it was an early Soviet film from 1929, right as, you know, sound is entering movies. And Vertov envisioned how, you know, the, there, there was this vision of what, uh, and I, I know, your Russian roots, I'm not just telling this story because of them, you know, the, the concept of understanding reality as interconnected and that whether, whether you were in Moscow or you were in Siberia, that there was a relationship between these places and, and these um, citizens. Uh, that was the vision of the film, but really it was just so magnanimous and profound yes. uh and it's very deep oh yeah i, yeah. I remember it. Yes. yeah yeah con camera aparatchik. yes i don't know how my accent not is probably bad. terrible not bad not bad Thank you. Oh, I... not um, bad i understood you so yeah so the and it's true you know of course cinema has so much potential in general to shape 
our culture and society and having been involved uh, you in so many of the biggest uh, cult classics of our generation like American Psycho, Wall Street, the, the remake of The Crow and so much more. What does the film mean to you? Has uh, the definition actually changed for you over the years? Well, you think of a movie like American Psycho, uh, it's, it's reality. How terrible is the sound from the cars? Is it awful? No, no, it's, it's perfectly okay. Don't worry. These it's it's soothing, so, and you stand out, so don't worry. <laughs> um, and Daha is the shadow. Sam, remove, the, sorry, remove the your shadow hat. terrible it's... with the hat? You remove your hat because it's causing the, the shadow. It's much better. Okay. I want to see your, your brain. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think movies are like theater in that there is a format, there is a structure um, that, that remains the same when you think about a Greek three-act play, a tragedy from before Christ. You know, you have a bunch of people in an amphitheater, a number of actors, and a story that we watch communally. And movies, in many ways, have remained the same since their creation a hundred years ago, right? That when you think about how a movie like The Man with a Movie Camera were seen, you know, yes, now there is sound. Yes, now there is color. Movies are a technology, so the evolution of what a movie is continues to augment and evolve with every generation of, of new technologies incorporated. Yeah. Um, and people look at streaming and think, oh my God, what, what does it mean? What is a movie now? And the answer is the same as it ever was. Something that we watch and shapes us and changes the way we see the world. That's true. And on this note, actually, I would like to uh, quote you uh, a little bit here, and I will read the quote that you, you've mentioned before, um, uh, that the tenets of Pressman film is uh, to tell radical stories, embrace emerging talent, and support those artists throughout the creative process. And then following these tenants, uh, tenants, you are able to create movies that are not just entertaining, but culturally meaningful and challenging to the audience. So that's your quote. And uh, mm -hmm. I uh, totally uh, res res resonate with this because it's exactly the essence that I, I feel um, talking to you or knowing you and uh, knowing the films that uh, Pressman produce. So thank you. Thank what you. is your core philosophy when it comes to selecting and producing films? When you're given a project, how do you do the selection and what do you feel? It's, it's a somewhat alchemical process, right? I don't think there's a singular answer to that question. Um, I think the filmmaker, the storyteller, is the most important thing. You have to believe that the person telling the story or the people, because now we're working with a couple of uh, directing duos that I'm very inspired by. Um, in film, the writer and director are the core of what comes to be. And the producer's job is to surround them with collaborators, uh, actors, cameramen, an entire crew, mm -hmm. even the financiers. Yes. It's important that everyone shares a vision and is working towards the same dream, the same goal. Yeah. So I can, you know, I can relate to it fully. I'm an events producer, as you know. So I, I um, have the same steps, similar steps, I should say, similar vision that I, I am I, I am surrounded by uh, uh, people in my industry or in some of the projects that I create with, with the same with the same goals. So thank you for sharing. How do you balance uh, honoring the legacy of your father while creating your own path and identity in the industry? God, I love these questions, Olga. You really 
Um, they're they're both like very personal and very universal, and uh, I think yeah. it's it's not. I think about it often, you know, uh, Ed, my father was known for being an independent producer, right? And uh, yes. by nature of being the son of someone, by nature of being human, I am dependent, right? The, the relationship to the company is that I inherit it, its legacy, its catalog, Absolutely. its philosophy, and so I simultaneously am endeavoring to both continue an independent spirit and in continuing an independent spirit, honoring my father's memory. Um, so I, I think that I'm guided by his principles. I'm guided by wanting to make films that are meaningful and culturally lasting like he did. And the only way that I can do that is by doing it in my own way. Uh, so, what you know, I don't, you... oh, okay. Go ahead. I don't have the design for it, but I find amazing. Uh, there, there's both new filmmakers we're working with, emerging filmmakers, as well as, you know, old legends. Like I'm getting to work with Oliver Stone right now. Um, but sorry, what were you going to ask? No, I'm just, first of all, I want to comment. What a beautiful, sincere, and just extraordinary, uh, real answer. And it really touches my heart. And, you know, I have goosebumps now. So mm -hmm. thank you for really for, for being so real and so passionate. I, I want to, on this note, I just wanted to ask you, how do you see the role of independent films evolving in today's entertainment landscape in general? Sorry, I was trying to share the video. I don't know how. Uh, this is my first Instagram Live, Olga. Oh, oh my God, you've done very well. I wanted to do the test with you, as you know, to go live, well, which we didn't have a chance, but you've done it. Well done, thank you for that. That shows that filmmaking skills as well. So, so, so sorry, sorry. What, was, what was the question? Well, the, the question was, uh, how do you see the role of independent films evolving in today's entertainment landscape? Um, the independent producer, uh, has always had the responsibility of putting together the team and the financing for the movie. Right, your yeah. your job is first to be the champion of the filmmaker. Um, there are a few ways of thinking of that question. One is uh, the sort of financial overseer. You're kind of the CEO of the movie as the lead producer because you have to build a movie up from the ground. Right, it's every movie is kind of like a startup. You, yeah. you build the blueprint of what you're going to make, you execute it, you bring it to market, and then you continue to, you know, create value with the work that is made. Um, the difference between an independent producer and a studio producer is that there is a degree of entrepreneurial intention, right? You're, for the studio, you're paid your wages, you work on the film, and maybe you get a bonus if the film does well, but ultimately it's outside of your control and it's outside of your basic function, right? You're not necessarily, your, your job is defined by what you do as an independent producer. You have to make things happen. Um, as opposed to having the whole structure right. built. Right. So in this way, so what is the measure of success then in your projects? Is it financial, be it financially or, or creatively? Well, 
your your goal is to make movies that find an audience and are culturally lasting and in doing that you find financial success right okay eyeballs equal money yeah. in movies to be yeah. a little bit grotesque about it yeah. right you're whether and, and that's the crisis that people are feeling in the industry people keep bemoaning oh movie theaters do people still go it's like yes people go to movie theaters yeah. and people are watching in their home theater people are watching on yeah. their phones yeah you know it's it's not there is no shortage of eyeballs there are more people watching yes. movies globally than ever before i totally agree and that's why so you know that brings us a little bit into well a little bit i would like to dive into the current projects which is a film investment film crowd investment the next stage for you and pressman films is community that's something that i personally care so deeply as well building relationships that bring positive energy and collaborations while elevating the culture in our society is also very important for me one of my personal key philosophies when i stage events with adagio events my company is to always push the boundaries of what we think the good event is or the good project is our guests might not know what goes behind the scenes uh, but when the experience is magic they all remember it and it's obviously so much more uh, about you as a filmmaker uh, and the, me and mark uh, talk a lot about the importance of movies as a medium for education and culture and i know that as an audience i can feel deeply connected to a movie that i personally resonate resonate to so uh, but you definitely push this even further for us as audiences with your new project uh, which is the latest project you have launched with Republic, has been a long time in making, I believe. So congratulations. And I'm so excited to see it growing so quickly and so successfully already. Um, so I understand that this is more, is that it's, this is not even a more crowdfunding, it's crowd investment. And I don't want to hijack any explanation about it because obviously, um, uh, I need you to explain what it means as the as for the audience. So now basically we can invest in in the future of the film, and I think this is most important for us that never even saw that we could be become uh, a producer of a major movie. So what was the process actually of coming to this uh, game, which is very very diff different and changing it, the concept of regular film financing, please. Talk us through it. So last week we launched on republic.com uh, a first of its kind crowd investment endeavor. Um, the principle behind it uh, is to allow investors from as low as 200 USD to a million USD to participate in the revenue of the life cycle of a film, as well as to understand the process of making films from beginning through to distribution, right? So there have been a number of projects or films that have raised money for a single movie. And there have been many companies that have sold an equity portion of their company um but what we saw in the technology of republic um republic is uh you know very well but just for your community um there have been uh three billion dollars in, invested through republic as a platform yeah. uh, over a million people over two million people have invested on the platform um it is a SEC regulated uh, securitized investment uh, that when when I think about the joy of growing up and being in the film industry, uh, the joy of being on set and getting to see the movie magic and how it is made, uh, I've always contemplated 
how do we make that experience broader? Um, you know, people love being on Instagram and watching an Instagram live with an actor on set. People love yeah. photographs of being behind the scenes. People are, are, are hungry to feel a greater connection to what they consume. Absolutely. And I think in the future, I think there's going to be a new way that we relate to the entertainment that we watch. I think that people's time is their most important commodity. My, my father made uh, first the film Wall Street with, that made Gordon Gecko yeah. famous. But in the second Wall Street, Wall Street Money Never Sleeps. Um, okay, this is, are you hungry? Did you need a chart? Oh, okay. Oh, you. Sorry. Hi. That's okay. <laughs> uh, Gordon Gecko said the most important thing, the most important commodity is time. Um, yeah. And so how we spend our time, what we choose to watch, it's a very important thing and it's it's valuable so to be able to share uh the experience of making movies as well as the financial upside of making films uh to me is is a radical opportunity for the film industry yeah. and it's one that the republic technology allows Absolutely. So, you, as, you know, as you mentioned, I wanted to ask you uh, what do you think about how the project will change the industry, but you did answer. So, obviously, it is a very, very drastic change and move forward. And what has been the response so far from both filmmakers and film fans? Film fans, if you can see it online, of course, but in your own words, what, uh, what do you say? Um, I think it only launched a week ago today today is thursday here it launched last thursday uh and we're at over a half million us uh dollars um and and that's just the beginning i think that uh we have another 70 days to go um and the whole intention of this is to build on a community level and yeah. allow people um so again Thank you to anyone who's watching this. Um, I hope you'll check out republic.com backslash Pressman. Uh, you know, share it with your friends. Um, we're, we really want to build something. Um, the, the people who've invested thus far, uh, many of them are from outside of our community, yes. right? It's, it's uh, people all over the world um, are able to become uh, part of this journey and uh, when I think about uh, um, what when we succeed not if we succeed and and success we already passed the threshold of uh, the first level of success which was 500,000 and we passed that in yes. five days um, to well, the have, to have a core audience that is not just passionate, but truly invested in yeah. what we're doing, that is valuable, right? That is going to help in the distribution of the movie and every facet of the movie's um, distribution life cycle. So. Absolutely. Well, a lot of, you know, there is a, let me tell you, there is a big boss among my friends and my community here and you know I, I obviously spread the word immediately and there's a lot of followings and a lot of my friends are actually embracing it with investments and very very positive uh, uh, remarks and positive feel about Thank it you. so uh, cool. this is great and i can con congratulate you and of course we will yeah. be uh, spreading we the word more sorry when when we were in uh toronto uh for the film festival People were super excited. Yeah. People yes. like the number of people who said, "God, I, I, I wish that something like this could be possible," because it's not Kickstarter. It's not just a donation. Yes, it's actually a revenue participation. So the investors can make money off yes. of being a part of the film world. Exactly. So. And 
calling yourself as a yes, as as a part of the film, as a as as a producer or whatever yeah. you want to kind of associate you with, which is mm -hmm. amazing. What about you know how do the film filmmakers themselves? Uh, uh, viewing this opportunity through the Republic's approach and how important it is for filmmakers to embrace this new financial models uh, uh, like uh, crowd financing or equity investment in general. What, what are they saying? Um, so I've spoken, sorry, there's a spider crawling on my phone. <laughs> mm. um, I spoke with an amazing filmmaker that I really admire named uh, David Gordon Green. He came to the party that we threw. Um, he started out making uh, very independent films in North Carolina, uh, films like George Washington and a film my father produ produced called The Undertow um, with, with a 14-year-old Kristen Stewart and uh, Joshua um, uh, Jamie Bell, uh, who was also also in Billy Elliot, uh, but I, I divert. He also made um, Pineapple Express, and he made the reboot of the film Halloween, the reboot of the film The Exorcist, and he was in Toronto premiering his film Nutcrackers with Ben Stiller that was the opening night uh, gala for, for the film festival this year. And he came to to the event and then he came to the movie screening we had after and he went out of his way to tell me that he thought that what we're doing is novel and innovative and essential for the future of film that we need audiences to feel like what they watch matters yeah. And we need to do new things to bring that level of passion into our industry. Um, you know, I think that filmmakers just want to make their visions happen. Yeah. So however we can do that, that still gives them creative freedom to tell the mm -hmm. films in the way they want to tell them is, is what we at Pressman yes. are here to do. That's wonderful. That's, that's very, very positive. Uh, um, sharing thank you so much but i just want to play a little bit of a devil's advocate you know when there are multiple stakeholders there's always a risk uh, of the case of like too many cooks spoil the broth uh, how do you balance artistic integrity with commercial visibility in the films that are backed by this particular platform so republic.com doesn't give a voting stake to all the investors <laughs> Um, okay. All the investors, the investments are done on chain, um, on blockchain rails. So when an investor joins uh, the Republic Slate Raise, they create an account. And to invest in the Pressman um, Development Fund Raise, uh, uh, they create a wallet. Um, and they, they put the money into the investment. Uh, and then as money comes into the fund, as we make movies, money is then dispersed on chain to all of the investors, right? They, they are all given the exact same terms in terms of how they relate to the money in a parapasu way. Uh, but what, what is um, ultimately where, where decisions lie, that's with Pressman Film, right? Okay. When you invest in our, our company, you're believing in our executive function and mm -hmm. our management team. Um, so there isn't really too many cooks in the yeah. kitchen. Uh, our, the way we see it is the community that invests yeah. will be able to give us data points. We'll be able to ask questions of the community and we'll welcome their questions and response. Um, and that that is valuable. Again, data Absolutely. is valuable. Okay. Understanding what your core audience wants yes. Uh, yes. is gonna be a better product than just acting blindly and believing you know everything.
That's a wonderful answer because, you know, first of all, it's, you know, it, it, it explains a lot. It also shows that the trust and belief in your own self and belief in your community and uh, joining the forces and basically communication is extremely important in, a, in, 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 a, in this particular project and in general and in creative project, um, projects as well. So thank you. Uh, on this note, I would like to dive in a little bit into the industry insights that I believe also would help uh, many of our viewers and listeners to go and search and go on to the uh, republic.com slash pressman and to see whether they want to participate and invest. Uh, what changes in the industry you personally have been excited about, about in general and which ones give you a bit of a concern? Um, I think it's amazing just on a phenomenological level that most everyone has a phone with a video camera in it and are able to make movies anywhere, right? If you think this is not a very, very good lighting situation where I am, there are cars going you. by constantly and yet you seem to see me and hear me decently. Absolutely. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. I think the fact that we're able to stream movies that at the click of a button, I can find a movie from 1942, or I can go to Letterboxd and I can look up a movie and find uh, a thousand people who've written about that movie and given their perspective. Uh, I think movies always were this dream machine. That's how Robert Roger Ebert would refer to them. Yes. Um, and they were always able to transport us into different worlds. But now there's this, there's this universality, there's this democratic access to both making and consuming movies uh, that, that's just really, really exciting to me. And I think I'm not, I, I love the technologies that are emerging. I, I was just um, with David Sachs and Daniel Brunt, as I mentioned, and I was talking about AI as a utility and the collaborations we're doing with OpenAI and Sora and um, ChatGPT, you know, there is, there is reason to worry about the displacement of human creatives, but there is even more reason to believe in the, the transcendent and essential force of human creativity, that, that the technology serves the storyteller. And so the more that we empower storytellers who care and, and wish to tell independent tales, uh, the, 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 the more of a, a blooming and nourishing um, fertile ground uh, the film industry will, will have. That's a beautiful, once again, you know, I have goosebumps again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful, in-depth and very, very, just uh, a very meaningful answer. Thank you for sharing that. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, the trends are moving very fast and very forward. And it's, uh, how does it, what does it mean to stay true to the storytelling uh, that Pressman feels, Films is known for, and you just explained about the balancing of the AI and new technologies, but yet there has to be a balance uh, not to disperse this energy that was built by Pressman Film all these years. How do you do that? Uh, just, just by truly uh, believing in the filmmaker, right? It's, um, it's not about whether a, a movie is shot in black and white or a movie is shot on an iPhone, right? It's about how the filmmaker believes their story should be told. Um, we, we, we're doing one project with completely generative animated technologies, and that's about memory and a story about loss. Um, it's the story of a father and a son um, and memory. And so it makes sense that in the technology, there is 
this inconsistency because it is like a dream state. It is like memory itself. And it is always changing and little things will appear like a hallucination. Uh, at the same time, we're doing a film shot on 16 millimeter film, um, you know, classic, traditional, yeah. old school filmmaking. Um, and, and in both circumstances, there's a creativity of the filmmaker that is matched by the form and the reason uh, they're telling their story is personal. And um, I think when we, we tell stories that matter to us, then they ha have a chance to matter yeah. to audiences. If you're just trying to make it to please the audience, people will probably just say, it didn't matter to you, so why should it matter to me? I so agree. I, 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 once again, I can relate exactly to my own projects as well. If I don't believe in it, if I don't feel it with my core inside, uh, it's less meaningful or it's definitely not going to shine the way uh, I want it to shine and so and others uh, perceive it as well. So thank you once again for sharing it. And that's, I believe, I think, uh, before we move to a little bit about social media and the, uh, a little bit of the softer side questions, what advice would you give to the aspiring filmmakers looking to break into this uh, vast industry, industry today? Um. I'm in, inclined to tell Sam Smith's them. <laughs> I'm inclined to give uh, one of my favorite filmmakers, Werner Herzog's wisdom, which is to to read and to live life. Right, that uh, you know there there is certainly a lot you can learn in film school and a lot you can learn from watching YouTube videos and practice making movies but I love when Werner uh, speaks about like an internal world and building your own relationship to uh, storytelling um, by living life and by reading great literature uh, I think anyone that tells you they have the answer um, has only part of the truth so people just need to go out make yeah. movies and figure it out for themselves yeah. yes it's certainly a journey uh sam uh, we have a bit of time and there is something that i always talk to my guests uh, uh, is the social media and is the is the pervasiveness of actually of social media there are more content creators these days than ever before in fact everyone is a content creator now and the lines between content and films are a bit blurred from on my opinion especially when i look a lot on instagram or on the captions who is doing what a lot of them people are content creators what are your thoughts on content creation and its effect on our attention span for the future films uh, it's a great general? It's a great question. Um, I was, before I was at the Toronto Film Festival, I was with my mother at the Telluride Film Festival, um, which is in the mountains yes. of Colorado. Yes. Um, a beautiful festival and one that's very, very committed to, you know, cinema and cinema history. Uh, and there was this amazing panel with Walter Murch who is one of the great editors of all time. Um, he edited many of Francis Ford Coppola's films, including The Conversation. Um, and Thelma Schoonmaker, who is Martin Scorsese's editor, uh, as well as Jacques Odiard, um, who made this incredible new film, Amelia Perez. Uh, and uh, it was as, as well as Joshua Oppenheimer, who had a new film uh, called um, The End, which is an amazing musical. Both Amelia Perez and The End are musicals uh, that you won't want to miss in a theater. Sorry, Eric. And Let me just interrupt you for a second. I hope all of you are taking notes and <laughs> putting it onto your 
wish and watch list. I uh, uh, I will need to rewatch, of course, this later and put the notes for my own self. Please continue, but thank you. And placing you in the scene, we're in the, in the mountains, uh, the Rockies are all around us. Ed, Ed Lockman, a cinematographer who worked with my father on a movie. My mother was an actress and singer in called True Stories by the great musician David Byrne, uh, the lead singer of The Talking Heads. Uh, it was moderated by the Columbia University professor, Annette Insdorf. Shout out to Columbia, the alma mater of Mark. Um, and they were speaking about this very question and they were saying, um, does, if I'm scrolling on Instagram and I see uh, a clip of Gene Hackman in Francis Ford Coppola's film, The Conversation, does that image somehow hold more in it than this video as I scroll through filmed on my iPhone? And there was a very interesting debate um, and a belief that as much as we are fragmenting our brains with so many more images per second, um, the, the notion that movies have sped up so much and that our brains are different yes. is actually, if you count the rate of edits, right, the cut points in a movie, between 1960 and 2020, it's still between three seconds and four seconds per cut. And Walter Murch said it, it's not surprising because that's around the length of a human breath, right? It's that we breathe in and we breathe out, and now we cut. Um, I, I think humans are here to express themselves we love narrative and how, how we express ourselves and and how we share our stories changes with with every generation i wish i had more time to sit around a campfire and just talk about nothing talk about everything but i don't i i love i love the speed of reality right now it's very very fast but um, it's pretty miraculous. Oh, it's super philosophical, you know, to, to talk about uh, this way about social media is, is, is very profound. And thank you again for this, uh, for this narrative and for this uh, opinion of yours. And how does it personally, how do you personally manage your own social media presence? I would like I don't to have, if, there, there, if you know anyone who's a brilliant, brilliant social media manager, uh, I am, I, I have stopped posting on my private Instagram for some time. Um, I work with uh, a younger gentleman named Jack Loyello, who's a USC grad film student, as well as Max Loeb, who's our director of development. Um, and together we try to think about cool memes, you know, ways to connect with with a viral audience you know I, I i was just sent a hilarious uh american psycho meme where someone created a playstation one graphic uh of patrick bateman walking down the the hallways singing uh i'm walking on sunshine um I don't know where these people are that are making this stuff, but I'm dying to meet them and connect with that community. That's the reason we're doing this raise on Republic yes. is we want that audience, those people who love movies and are spending their time creating these videos and memes to actually get to make money with us yes. when that movie has a long cultural life. So that's, that's the core of it. That's like, that's a beautiful point. It's, it's, it's very meaningful for people really who, who are listening. Please keep this in mind. This is incredible. This is uh, something that uh, all of us uh, 
I guess so many of us does aspire. Uh, we have just a little bit of time, so I want to, I, I can't let you go without a few personal and so questions. Um, even though some of them I know just for this, because you are a friend of my son and because you are that adopted son, as I said, but what do you actually enjoy doing as outside of work that helps you to keep inspired or grounded? Uh, you're always so incredibly busy, but yet you are such an old and deep soul. So share with us. I'm so sorry for the siren. That's okay. That's, uh, it's life. It's a reality. So be. <laughs> um, how do I spend my free time? I work constantly. Um, I I have a beautiful and wonderful girlfriend um, who I met at the Toronto Film Festival two years ago. Uh, I have an amazing mother who I'm very close with um, and I love to spend time with her. Uh, I love sports. I love eating. I love a dance party when I'm lucky enough to find myself at a good party where people are dancing um i i love music i love to read i tend to only read work these days um yeah, yeah I, I i find uh not enough time to play sports um but you know being outdoors and uh being in nature is one of my happiest states uh and love going to the movie theaters with friends uh, there's there's so many fabulous things Beautiful. to do in life i'd love to travel and if i don't make it to singapore Beautiful. in the next 12 yeah. months i don't know what Sam, to say other than Sam, I, I don't even want to entertain this thought okay and you know that so your your room is ready for you and you know that so um uh it's a very, you know, you are definitely a very Renaissance person and your answer is definitely showing that. And it's really, really wonderful that you have your core values are in the right place. So thank you. And the uh, last thing, you know, um, I've started this new, a little bit of a new experiment on my conversation series, which is, is to get my guests to ask the next question that will be posed to the next uh, next guest for the program. So my previous guest, Suki, who is also a director and who is a women's advocate, and uh, she's a very good friend of mine. She had a question to you for this matter, stating, what do you do that makes you really happy? Not what makes your life happy in general, but what is it, the purest thing in your life that brings you happiness? It could be walk tickling into your for uh, talking to your family or anything. But basically what I asked you just now, I feel already answers it, but if you can just say one simple sentence, uh, what makes you happy in the moment? Um, I go to the banya, I have a schwitz, I jump in the cold plunge <laughs> and I'm reborn. Amazing, well, I wonder where it comes from, you know, and I wonder, who enjoys it as well. So, but thank you. That's Banya, if somebody doesn't know what it is, it's a, it's a Russian style sauna or steam room. So whatever you want to call it. So yes, that's, that's a trick. It's a traditional thing. So if you are ever in New York, try it. There are places and my son or Sam can, can uh, tell you where they are. And before the end, finally, what is your question to my next guest? Anything. Do I, do I get to know who the next guest is? Uh, in the due time. Okay. My question would be, um, if you were to be an animal and you had to look for a partner who was another animal, what animal would you be and what would your partner be oh my god <laughs> that's really going into the real essence of the existence i should say the boris you know we all kind of came from 
somewhere there. But thank you. I love mm -hmm. the question. It's amazing. And oh, I'm sure it's a really good challenge. So fun. You Sorry? make me feel, you, you're a very good interviewer. You make uh, you make me feel comfortable. Sorry again. No, it's that, a, that it's I'm a, not situated, but no, it, how fun you, that I you, met. You, Sorry. Go, go ahead. Just how funny it is that I met uh, our producing partners from the film I made with your son. And so yes, cool. no, it's, it, you know, it's all about energy and I strongly believe in it. So it meant to be and you meant to meet uh, them tonight <laughs> and uh, we still made it on time and it was an incredible conversation. Really, uh, just from the bottom of my life, my heart and my life, whatever you want to say. Thank you so much. This conversation, of course, will be uh, recorded, it is being recorded. I will post it all over social media and uh, on a YouTube as well. All my conversations are available on IG, Events by Olga, as well as on a YouTube and the conversations with Olga. Please support Sam, please support uh, uh, the platform, the project that uh, Sam and Republic just launched. It's unbelievable. And we all in our dreams will be all want to be filmmakers and, and just creators. So this is an opportunity. Thank you, Sam, once again. And uh, I will send you the link as well. And uh, have a good evening. I know that you're super tired, but I'm very, very proud of you. Oh. And thank you. Thank you, Olga. Mark just texted me and he okay. says, I love you. Oh. About oh, you. Yes. Yes. Said, I love, tell love you and I love Mark as well. So thank you very much. Love you. Thank really, my thank heart you. is full. I have a very, very difficult period right now because it's very, very busy for me. But uh, because of the crypto week and F1 week, so this conversation gave me so much energy. And I'm telling you this really very sincerely. So thank you personally for it. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Have a good night. I talk to you soon. Very Bye. 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 Bye.